This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer songwriter out of Toronto, Canada. Her name is Megan DeLima. Miss DeLima, how are you today? I'm good, Todd. How are you? Great, great. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, me too. I um, I got some information from your team and uh, you have a new single out called Inside, yeah. which I love, by the way. We're going to talk about that a little bit later and hopefully get a chance to play it. Uh, but before we do that, um, for those who don't know anything about Megan DeLima, tell us about yourself. Yeah, so I'm a R&B singer songwriter from Toronto. I've been doing music professionally, say, past 10 years, I perform with my guitar all around the GTA. Uh, I've been doing that with myself and my band and just putting out new music and Recently, I've been putting out a lot of new music with a really incredible producer that's actually based in LA. His name's Mark Pelly. And yeah, we're releasing an EP together this fall, which I'm excited for. But yeah, just keep keep on pushing it and just keeping the dream going. And, and you know, every every song that comes out, I feel like it's I'm just growing throughout that process. So it's, it's good. Everything's been good. I've been blessed um, in terms of music and I just, I'm putting all of my efforts into this stream. Okay, well, fantastic. Now, um, you said you've been making music for like 10 years. Um, yeah. How did you get started? I mean, was your family in the music or how did how did the music bug uh, catch yeah. you? So so everyone in my family is, uh, is a musician or a visual artist. So everyone uh, that comes into the family, it's kind of like you're expected almost to do music or visual art. So with both my parents, um, my mom's father was a sax player, a jazz sax player, and my dad's father was a jazz guitarist. And those things kind of just trickled on throughout the generations. So my dad also played guitar. He taught me uh, that all the music came from, my grandparents were born and raised in Goa, India, and then they all moved to Nairobi, Kenya. And that's kind of where they were in the jazz scene mainly. And then when they moved to Toronto, they continued playing in big bands and stuff here. So it's it's definitely in my blood. <laughs> it's definitely a a thing that I'm I'm grateful to have, be surrounded by so much music and roots uh, that it feels like a natural thing to me, which is it's a blessing. It's definitely a blessing. Now, uh, you you said your siblings. I mean, I'm sorry. Do you have siblings? Yeah, I have two older brothers. Okay, and they're in music too? So both my brothers are visual artists actually. So they, yeah, so they're both art directors in Toronto. And same with my dad, he's also an art director, visual artist in Toronto, but he plays guitar as well. They're all musical. It's just I kind of took the music route and then everyone else took the visual visual arts route. Okay, all right, nothing wrong with that. Now, um, um, your story, um, you said your, your grandparents, I'm at, so you, were, I'm sorry, were you born in Toronto? I was born, yeah. I was born in the greater Toronto area. Okay. But your musical taste seemed to, um, you know, be, you know, all over, you know, different cultures and stuff. And so yeah, is that reflective in your music as well? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I think since my, my family traveled so much from Goa to Nairobi to here, they brought all of the culture and the stories and experiences that they experienced along the way to get to Toronto. And yeah, I'm grateful to be raised on so much, so much jazz music, so much blues, uh, funk, Motown. Honestly, it just goes everywhere in terms of what they exposed me to. And I think that's, that's what makes music feel so 
uh, easy and natural in certain senses for me because I was just raised listening to it all the time and dancing to it all the time or playing it all the time and that stuff then subconsciously comes out just in my like everyday life which is it's cool it's super cool who were um who were some of your influences uh maybe besides your family but what yeah. other artists um that you looked up to so growing up i listened to a lot of michael jackson a lot of michael jackson janet um stevie wonder earth wind and fire those are kind of like my staples i would say for uh just like it's so good it's it's just music is written in a different way now but that's just like that's just untouchable to me you know prince can't forget prince um yeah but yeah just like the core staples of they're kind of like the gods music in my eyes okay um so let's talk about um okay so when was your first because this is not your debut um yeah Zingo and soon to be EP. When was your first, um, your first release? So my first release was in 2015. It was an EP called Like You Do, which I released uh, my last year of college in Toronto. And that one was cool because every year at my college, they bring in like this heavyweight producer and all these students submit music to, to showcase their song and whatever song gets chosen, the producer gets to work with one student every year to work on the EP. And I got chosen that year. So Bob Ezrin got to sit in and work on my single Like You Do With Me, which was really, really eye-opening. Uh, it was kind of like taking my learning stage to like the professional extreme stage and like a snap. And yeah, it just taught me about just getting your head in the game and you know, just arranging things that might not always be right in your ears, but for the audience and just like in different ways that you are used to doing it, which was which was a great learning experience for me. And he's a great guy too. Definitely like a, he's, he's um, constructive, but in a good way, but he's also just very kind and he wants the best for all the music he works on, which is probably the quality of the best producer, you know? But yeah, it was it was a good experience to work with him as like my first major producer. Okay. And so was that was it released um, locally throughout Canada? It was yeah, worldwide. So you can okay. yeah, you can find it on all streaming platforms and it was yeah, in twenty fifteen and the whole EP was there. But the one that he worked the most on was like you do. You do, okay. Yeah. And so how was it received uh, worldwide? It was it was good. It was good. It was my first um, it was my first EP, so the response was was good for it. it. Had horns in it and background vocals, and there was kind of like a bit of everything on that EP. Like there was some string stuff, or there was some just like vibe R and B stuff. There was an acoustic song on there, so it was kind of like a it was kind of like an exploration, I would say, since I was just starting, but. It was, it was good. Everyone, everyone really enjoyed it. And people still listen to it today. And they tell me that they like it today. So I'm, I'm happy for that. I'm, I'm proud for that. I got to look that up. Um, yeah. Did you, did you go on tour and support it or how did you? Yeah. So I did, I did shows within the GTA. So within the great Toronto area. So I did Toronto jazz festival and there's other ones that are in the great Toronto area that I did. I had a album release for it as well in Toronto, which was, a really fun night. We got a 12 piece band there and we, we hammered out those songs and other songs as well. It was good. It's okay. a good way to promote it. All right. Um, so you, you are, even though, um, you've been, you, you, you've been seasoned. So you've, you've gone through maybe some of the ups and downs, or maybe you're still going through that, but at least you seem to be in good spirits and still putting out good music. Um, yeah. Yeah. This new track you have called Inside. Tell us about that. So Inside, I wrote last year. It was actually about my relationship with music. It was about the ups and downs of music and being an artist and going through that, you know, I love this and should I really be doing this? Or, and I love this again. And, you know, is this for me? And then I love it again. And it's that kind of wave of emotions that I feel like a lot of artists relate to. Um, and yeah, Inside was about working with my producer, 
and it was about feeling like yeah this is this music is feels right for me and this makes me feel proud and this makes me feel like people can resonate with it and it can click with the audience and not just for me so that's what inside was about it was about like connecting my purpose again and connecting my purpose with music which is cool for me because okay. i can just yeah reflect on that when yeah. i'm feeling discouraged i guess okay well it definitely works and we're gonna play it here in a couple moments um i like it because you have a you can definitely tell the jazz influence in your song uh mm -hmm. but there's also um some r b in there as well um mm -hmm. so if you're a fan of r b and jazz this song <laughs> might be perfect for you um now your ep that's coming out i don't want to get too ahead of ahead of you but is yeah. that more along the same lines than what yeah. you're doing or is it yeah i would i would say it's more contemporary r b i think the inside single that i put out was was very like poppy in certain senses but the yeah the ep that's going to come out is definitely more contemporary r b i'm okay. really excited for it all right cool. so we're going to pause right now and uh, this is inside on the bring back cell music podcast and we'll be right back. we'll continue our episode after this message Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Now, back to our conversation. All right, Megan, we're back. Uh, yeah, Inside, great song. I love it. Very soft and, I guess, sultry, maybe? Yeah. Um, so I let's let's that. step back a little bit. I mean, that's great. We'll, we'll pick up that a little bit later. But tell me about some of your previous uh, releases. So after Like You Do, after my EP, I released a single called Unfold Me. And that one actually started very acoustic. It started with my voice and my guitar. I loved it so much that I threw it on my EP Like You Do. And I'm like, I just want the world to hear this. And my manager heard me in a festival before he was my manager. And kind of was like, what is this song? Like, why is this song not on the on Spotify or iTunes? I'm like, oh, it is. And he's like, why isn't it produced? and I just didn't have the time or I didn't do it that time. So we spent a while just finding the right producer for that song and a duo from Toronto called AD Empire. They produced Unfold Me and it was incredible. They kind of took this like acoustic sound and made it into this full arrangement, which was really awesome. I got to do like a big budget music video for it, which that's on YouTube as well, which I was so stoked about. and. If anybody wants to check it out, they can just type in my name and unfold me. I'll come up. Yeah, After I don't want to cut you off. I, when I was doing research on you, I did see the unfold video. Um, it's a great video, and I love the yes. house that it was filmed in. It's gorgeous, eh? Yeah. Is that in Toronto? That's in Toronto, yes. The Berkeley Bicycle Club in Toronto, right off of Jarvis Street. So all the Toronto people would probably know that. But oh, okay. if right. we were looking, We that was like super important for us when we were locating the right spot for it is just to get like this empty house that I could just move through and it would just make you feel like it was warm and just had so much character and when we saw it we're just like yeah that's it and there's a there's this music video called uh like a star by Corinne Belly Ray and it's kind of got a similar vibe where she's in this it's more it's like a light filled house in the UK and she's just like just moving through this house and it looks so beautiful. And I'm just like, oh, I want something similar to that, you know, where you can just see me and the song and the house and the, the, the focus is the music and the focus is me coming out as an artist. So I was happy that that house was the location for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that works. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. And so when you say uh, produced, um, so was the song already written and you yep. okay so it was written then you had somebody in come in and kind of add all the bells and whistles or how does exactly that, okay. so for me when i write i always write with my guitar usually i, I mostly write with my guitar and i always write the chords and the lyrics and the melodies for the singing the lyrics like the main melody 
And then when I bring it to the producer, they add the beat, the bass, keys, and any like extra things. I do, I work with BGs with the producer. We kind of like create ideas and stuff for background vocals. Um, but yeah, I kind of make like the meat and potatoes, I would say, of the song, which is just like chords, harmony, and the lyrics and the melody. And then they kind of put all that extra framework around that and solidify it all together. So that's kind of what happened with Unfold Me. And that still is what happens with all the other songs that I release now to this day. Okay. Curious, do you um, do you do any writing for other artists? Uh, I don't, but I, I love to collaborate with other artists. Since I've had a lot of time right now at home because <laughs> of COVID, I've been bouncing back ideas and doing covers and and I'm open to writing with other artists, but I haven't written anything right now that's out in the world with another artist, no. Okay. And so since you brought up COVID, uh, yeah. a Corona, how is yeah. that, or if it's affected your, you know, the release of new music uh, or et cetera, yeah. how has that affected your 2020? Cause it seems like everyone we speak to has either been delayed or they had to take on a different avenue which they didn't think about in 2019 but 2020 kind of forced him to think of alternatives so has COVID um, influenced you at all? For sure for sure COVID's influenced me uh, as a full-time musician it has flipped my world upside down in terms of my side hustles my main hustle performing connecting with my band just doing things that as an artist you have to be out there all the time. You have to be performing, you have to be writing, you have to be collaborating with people and doing it from home. It's been a switch, you know? I've been adjusting pretty well. I definitely, like when it started, it was a hard transition. Like I, I was kind of like very low and negative about it. And then I kind of moved past that. And now I'm in a, a good, good space, which is cool. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, change the way that artists can collaborate with each other. I don't know how it is in California right now, but in Toronto, like we're just starting to have people perform right now, but it has to be outside and you can like see people, but it's in really small groups. So it's definitely, it's definitely been a different vibe for a musician. Yeah, I could imagine. Yeah. Um, now this is kind of called off base. You're like the, fourth artist I've interviewed from Toronto. Cool. And um, there's some something going on in Toronto with R&B because <laughs> everybody I've interviewed has some great music. Um, Thanks, and you know, when you think of, um, you know, R&B, you don't really necessarily think about Toronto. Um, I mean, you think about maybe Drake. Um, but Toronto, it appears that you guys have a lot of talented people up there. I think Toronto is a hub. I think we got so many great, like, I'm also a bit biased, <laughs> but yeah. we got, yeah, we got so many great artists coming out of Toronto and a lot of them I'm happy to see are my friends and it's, it's definitely a hub. I think people are watching Toronto more often these days because they're realizing where the music's, that the music's coming from here as yeah. well. And we're, we're more on the radar, I think. Yeah, most definitely. It used to be maybe a, you know, a well-kept secret, but now I think the secret yeah. is out. Um, yeah. Some sure. good stuff is coming out of Toronto. Yeah. Um, so that leads me to um, another question. Um, you, I can say, you know, I know, I guess touring is out of the question right now for, I guess, the unseeable future. Are you doing any kind of um, maybe IG Live or Facebook Live to yeah. get, the, get the word out? Yeah. So right now, I, I have been doing, I had actually my own... IG live showcases that were happening where I featured a couple artists on my platform uh, during COVID. I thought it'd just be a good way for people to connect. But I've been also doing my own online shows as well. Like I did one for City Hall Toronto a couple weeks ago. And as my singles are coming out, I plan on doing more things with just myself performing my songs. But if you follow me on social media, you'll see whenever I post that, it'll be, yeah, it'll be advertised. Okay. And quickly, um, tell us about um, how to find y'all social media. Yeah, so everything is at Megan DeLima, and that's M-E-A-G-A-N-D-E-L-I-M-A, -E -E Megan DeLima. 
And that's on Facebook, iTunes, Spotify, Instagram, Twitter, all those good things. Okay. And we'll have uh, information uh, about Megan on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com and also in the show notes of this interview if you're watching on YouTube under the uh, show description. Um, So Megan, um, you don't mind me asking, uh, how old are you? I am 26. 26, wow, okay. Um, What kind of, um, if, if you had a young, person who wants to maybe follow in your footsteps what kind of advice would you give them about the music business as a whole hmm. um i give a there's a couple things and i do this to today is i i have a lot of open conversations with people that want to go into the music industry because i know people do that with me and i want to kind of pass on those steps one of my main things and i've always i've always stuck by this is you need as many tools as possible to be in the music industry. It's not enough to just be a singer these days. It's not enough to just play guitar. You gotta like understand what you're doing, um, be a good person to a certain extent, talk to other people, be relatable, um, cut out all the BS. um, Just there's so many different avenues and you kind of just have to soak up all of those things because as I said, like, yeah, everybody i i personally believe everybody can sing and you you need like every tool in your toolbox to kind of get you to the next step so i'm like a strong believer in that um i would just say good karma good karma is definitely a thing like trying to do good good for other people and not expecting that stuff to come back for you but it just that energy, like putting out a good vibration and putting out good energy, like the, the universe kind of receives that and kind of like, you you get that back in certain way, shape or form. I think that's also super important. And yeah, just networking. Networking is a huge thing. Connecting with people and not being afraid of it. You know, like if, if you try and you get a no, then at least you can say you've tried and that's an, that's an opportunity that you could have had or you or you maybe missed that time or maybe you could get a different time there's like this motto that i do which is called create fate so if you expect like fate is kind of like if you're expecting it to happen that's great but just instead of waiting it for it to have to happen just create it yourself you know that's actually how my obama gig came from is i kind of created that fate for myself it was not in my lap <laughs> And I saw the opportunity and I kind of messaged who I need to message and it was one of the best experiences of my life from it. So, yeah, there's, I guess that's a loaded answer. No, no, not at all. Um, you know, wise words from, from you, exactly. Um, now, speaking of Obama, I don't know if people caught that, but you performed for former President Obama. Yeah. Uh, it was January. January 2020. What was that experience like? And did you get a chance to dap him up or something? I got to sing all of his favorite songs. Um, I got to hear his incredible voice and his incredible message. It's like, yeah, I don't don't think there's any experience, maybe other than the Grammys, that would compare to that for me. It It was a dream. It was like living a dream doing that gig. Uh, it came about because I had performed for another gig early last or late last year. And I saw that the same people that hosted that gig were hosting Barack Obama, President Barack Obama in January. So I was like, hmm. So I just messaged them and said, hey, do you need any music for the thing, for your, for your, uh, your event? And they said, oh, that's such a great idea. Like, we'd love to have you on board. And I was like, what is happening? Like, this is great. (laughs) It was just like the easiest yes I've ever received in my life. Um, And it got better, honestly, as the weeks led on to Obama. It got better. Like, at first I was supposed to sing, like, in the lobby as the event people, uh, like, the attendees and stuff were entering. Before we we go on, uh, Megan, what type of event event was it? Yeah, it was called... uh, Future C- series, a conversation with President Barack Obama to talk about the future of the economy. So it was talking about business, 
and the economy and making it an inclusive space and diverse space and just accessible for all. And it was a really cool event because for every ticket sold, which was pretty pricey, uh, another ticket was gifted to a young person under 30 for free. So it was this room of 6,000 people of every age, background, everything, which was really, really incredible. It was just very incredible. Oh, wow. What a, yeah. Wow. Congratulations on that. Thanks. Thanks. It was, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. As, as I was saying, like at first I was just supposed to be singing as guests arrived. And then as we got closer, um, opportunities opened up where I got to actually sing for, Ob for president Obama on the main stage upstairs where I got to sing actually imagine by the Beatles, like a cover of imagine by the Beatles, but it was a tribute to indigenous lives and black lives matter, which was really, really special for me. Um, so I got to do that and yeah, I was very close to, very close to him. It was like, there was just like me and eight secret service <laughs> to members in between, but it was, it was a cool experience. Wow. Wow. That's, wow. Quite a story. All right, Megan, I, um, I see you grabbed your guitar. You going to entertain us with, uh, with something? Yeah, I thought I'd play you uh, the single that I just released called Inside and in an acoustic way. I'll play you like a little clip. All right, let me give you the proper intro. This is Megan with Inside. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's right. See where it goes. You'll be surprised at what you can do. All what's inside you. Maybe you're cool, maybe you're sick Yes, I will show, show you the way of what you can do All what's inside Trust and believe it that you'll be okay Cause when you know, you know the heart shows you the way Believe it that you'll be okay Cause when you know, you know the heart shows you the way Oh, bravo, bravo Thanks, Todd And I must admit, thank you, <laughs> Megan No, thank you, Todd All right, so, um, so that leads me to maybe our final question here Yeah What do you, um, what do you hope people get out of your music? I want to write music that people connect with. I feel like these days I'm writing music that really connects with how I'm feeling. It is kind of like me on a silver platter. And I want people, when they listen to it, to bring emotions that they maybe can't sing themselves or they can't write themselves, but they it describes how they're feeling and they can it can resonate with them. Honestly, as an artist, that's all I can hope for for my music is that it means something to them just as much as it means to me. Oh, very nicely put. Um, now, where can people find your music? Yeah, so I'm on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Deezer, uh, everywhere at Megan DeLima. So that's Megan, M-E-A-G-A-N, DeLima, D-E space, L-I-M-A. And then for social media, it's also Megan DeLima on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of those incredible things. Okay. Um, Inside is already out and they can pick yeah. that up. How long has that been out? It's been out for two weeks now. Two weeks. Oh, so it just was released. Yeah, it's, it's okay. new. All right. And the EP is dropping when? I'm sorry, I forgot. It's drop yeah, it's okay. It's dropping early October. Early October. October, October 9th is the, the date, yes. Okay, and um, do you want to share the title of the EP, or is it too early to tell? It's too early to say now. Okay. But I'm yeah. really, yeah, no, it is too early to say now. But I'm, I'm really excited. And all I want to say is, the singles that I will be releasing this summer leads up to my EP. It's all connected. Okay. And if if you guys want to figure that out on your own of what the EP is going to be called, then kudos to you maybe i'll give you a special prize for that but 
yeah, it's all it's all connected to all the right. EP that's coming out in the fall. And how many tracks are going to be on the EP? Do you know? Yeah, there's going to be. I'm going to say five. If I can get the sixth one on there, yes, that'd be great. But I, I would say for sure there's going to be five. Okay, fantastic. Cool. Um, Megan Delima, pick her music up definitely, and be on the lookout for her EP in October. Thank you. Megan, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for having me. This is so oh, much no fun. Problem. This was fun. Thank you. And that's Megan DeLima on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Megan DeLima. You can find out more about Megan on her website at megandelima.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.